tell us who you are and what do we have behind us? Well, I'm uh, Juan Azcarate. I'm a researcher, a PhD researcher at the Faculty of Architecture here at TU Delft. And what we have behind us is a prototype of a facade leasing system. So the idea is basically that the, these four panels represent different types of services that a building facade can deliver. And we are looking at how this can be used uh, to facilitate a model in which the building owner rents these services uh, by renting the facade. So it's a leasehold system, they rent the facade? Yes, exactly. Okay, so what kind of services does an integrated facade deliver? Uh, well, basically, in contrast to a normal facade, which is just uh, basically a protection from the outside, so it has a glazing and a high insulation frame, for example, a service integrated facade or an integrated facade delivers also uh, ventilation, uh, it generates energy through PV panels, for example. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and this energy can be storaged also in the facade with uh, batteries and a then distribution system. Wow. Um, it also has uh, automated windows and solar shading that gets activated automatically yeah. uh, whenever it's necessary, when the sun is shining or when users are just uh, yeah, cold or warm or anything else. And uh, yeah, well, air handling system, so it purifies the air, wow. uh, it warms, it uh, cools down also to a certain extent. Uh, and well, the idea is that in an extreme case, it can basically deliver all the um, services that the building needs to deliver an indoor comfort to the yeah. users. Wow. So it's a bit more than just a normal facade. Yeah, exactly. Uh, quite way a few more. Things. Way yeah. more, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned there's a leasehold mm -hmm. construct. So why would you lease a facade? Well, basically, the idea is that the owners of buildings are normally not the, really the ones that have the most technical expertise about how to manage uh, facades. And instead what they really want is to provide the users with a final indoor comfort. And of course to do this with the best, uh, lowest amount of resource use and with the lowest energy consumption because that saves them, saves them money. So basically the same as when we just hire any service, we want another company to be responsible for dealing with the technical uh, uh, requirements to get that service to keep running uh, so it's the same in this case building owners prefer might prefer to outsource all this technical knowledge and instead just get the services that they want and that they care about so what's the connection with this leasehold model this facade that you're describing there and the circular economy how does that work well, it's basically a way of facilitating the circular economy transition, let's say. We, there's a lot of projects that focus on uh, designing a product or engineering a product and then seeing how that can eventually fit into a circular economy. And of course, then they design this product in a circular way to be easy to remanufacture or recycle. What we're trying to do here is a bit the other way around to first set the basis uh, from the business perspective. So saying, well, this can be interesting for building owners and for suppliers to, to work in this new kind of way. And then once this business model is in place and it's working, then companies will have an incentive to re-engineer and redesign their products okay. to be more circular. Yeah. So it's, a bit of a reverse. it's not just the business thing, is it? It's technologies as well, but you're doing that within the context of a circular economy. It's not like your starting point, but it actually fits really well for a circular economy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it fits within the framework. Sure. So what are the main barriers? I mean, if this is such a great idea, why is everyone not doing it? Well, it basically changes completely the way that we are used to making buildings, to developing buildings and to building them. Uh, so, I mean, in the let's say, traditional, from, from the way that we finance uh, building projects, the way that building projects are constructed and engineered and designed and everything else, everything is just based on this linear system in which ownership just gets transferred over and over again, as in the case of normal products. So basically, what we see is that most of the barriers are not really so much in technology or in the engineering of the products, but really in the way that banks uh, even provide financing or the way that the building law is uh, works with split ownership between clients and suppliers and so on. So that's what we actually want to see in this project, how all those stakeholders are currently organized and what kind of transition they all have to make in the way that they do things to uh, reach this new way of service uh, performance. Basically. So this demonstrates engineering design in a circular economy is disruptive, it is different, it is exciting, and it works. Yep, exactly.